Life is too short to be living somebody else's dream. That is a quotation from the late and great Hugh Hefner. Uh, I kind of disagree because, you know, I probably could have lived his life and been pretty happy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this uh, quotation came, on, came about because Hugh Hefner used to own one of these things. This is a Mercedes-Benz 600 Pullman. And I actually have the GCV version of this thing. But every time I pull it out for comparisons, knowing there's better versions than this, the GCD, I decided to get this off AliExpress because it was really inexpensive. If you're into this sort of thing, you might want to hop on there. It was much cheaper than I thought it would be. Maybe because this casting has been out for a while. So, let's see. We're going to do a comparison. We'll see if we're going to upgrade today. Maybe I'll keep the other one and do like a pimp mod or something. So, there is nothing really even on this box like who made this thing at all <laughs> and uh, that's strange all right we'll just get that out cover is probably taped no it's not taped there's two friction taps there so let me get that out of the way so here it says dcm that is the brand so shiny my camera can't focus but anyways that's the brand that put it out supposedly this is one of 500 this colorway and this colorway is like a blue it's not metallic though it's just like a darker blue uh you can clearly see there's some uh flag poles or what what not there so i don't think i should take this off the stand we can compare it to some photos though most of these photos I looked for have only uh, four door handles but some of these like this one actually has six door handles and because the seating configuration is a little different I have to assume and we'll get to that photo in a moment but there I'll try to focus there between the two Pipes coming out the back, the chrome on the windows. Tail lights might be a little tall on this. All right, so here's a photo. So with the six door, it's actually you know three rows of seats facing forward, more like a bus. But I'm gonna assume the four door, you know, this seat is facing backwards, like how I consider limousines. So interesting. Let's start with the wheels. So we got the nice Mercedes star there. It's not a perfectly centered, but it's still pretty good. The white walls and the tires are also, I don't know if it's the tire is warped or, or what, but it doesn't look very concentric. The vents in the wheels though, they seem all right, if not a little bit big though. Yeah, they seem a little big. There is depth going there. See my pick kind of vanishes. Oh, they're actually passing air on the back side wheel. Look at that rear wheel. You can see light passing through it. So that's probably why the holes are so big. Because uh, if they were too small, I think when they when they chrome plate the wheel, it might fill in that air gap. That's what I'm just guessing. Uh, sadly, this is another case where mimicking tread side blocks is uh, present on this. You don't see tread side blocks on a road going car, so I don't know why these brands continue to do this. So this looks like it has like rally tires or snow tires on it with those sidewall tread blocks. It's kind of strange. The chrome uh, is pretty nice though. You know, first the bumper, I'm sure that's a separate piece, but then, you know, this chrome line is going all the way back. And what I don't know is this. Is it a separate piece? It actually might be a separate plastic piece. I think it is. The brake is so fine that I think that must be a separate piece of plastic glued to the side of the casting. So that's really cool. 
Uh, this might be the first model that I've seen. Like molding is a separate piece. You know, I've seen door handles, window moldings, but like a lower molding. Well, I don't know. Maybe I forgot. Anyways, we got some chrome mirrors. It's uh, kind of weird though. Why? Um, why are they just horizontal on the bottom like that? Uh, I'm just trying to look at the real one. They should blend into the. It's a strange mirror. It's almost like this mirror came from a different model and they just jammed it in here. At least they're horizontal. Although, wait a second. This this mirror, see? There's a lot of chrome. I don't know if it's paint or what, but this mirror looks a lot blobbier here than this one. It's almost like two, two totally different mirrors. So, that's unfortunate. Maybe that's why this model was so inexpensive. Maybe these are like rejects. Alright, well, the door handles are nice, you know, they're separate pieces. There's actually air passing in between the door and the handle. Hopefully you can see the pick there. Yeah, so that's very realistic. The window chrome looks very nice as well. Uh, the windows themselves, they're pretty good because they're so slab-sided. There isn't too much distortion. Uh, Alright, let's go back to the front then. Nice, nice headlights from what I can see. You know what, hold on, I'm gonna raise this camera because this thing is so long. I think I need the extra distance here. See the striations in the headlights? Very cool. They're on the inside. What I'm feeling here is perfectly smooth. So that detail is on the back side. And then there's yellow paint for the turn signal. And there's some sort of depth and stuff for the actual main headlight. I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually a bump in the middle of that concave uh, cavity. It's just that my phone screen's so small, you guys actually see more than I do. It's nice to see that there's something on the license plate. It's nice to see a bit of an oversized Mercedes logo here, but look at this little photo etch star here. That thing's awesome. That is so fine. It's crazy how thin that is. I'm at four times magnification, and look how thin that star is. Wow, if you touch that thing, it's just going to snap, I think. But that might be the finest Mercedes star in my collection now. That is so thin, crazy. Yeah, it's too bad, though, that this thing is too big. Oh, right, well. So, one highlight of this is the actual grill it looks like the photographs, at least the number of openings. You'll see the GCD is not quite like that. Um, one thing that is a slight letdown, or maybe they have different grills over the years, you know, this, this car has been around for a while, it was produced for a while, but uh, the photograph shows all this grating is chromed, so there is a texture, it's just not chromed on the uh, surfaces. Alright, uh, boy, what's going it's so shiny, I don't know if there's a s silver paint there, or no, it's just a reflection. Alright, so these little flagpoles also are very thin, as thin as a dental pick. Going to the top, we have some photo wash wiper blades opposing. And then we have some plastic chrome pieces here with some, at least this one has some bent striations. This one, again, it's been filled in with too much chrome, whatever they use to do this. I don't know if it's paint or, or what. So anyways, there's a couple of bumps or something here, probably for the wiper fluid. And then there's some sort of hatch here. Maybe that pops up to let fresh air in. Well, the roof is pretty good. Mm, yeah, that was just like lint. I mean, it's pretty smooth. I'm still at four times magnification. So I'm quite impressed actually with the paint, paint on this guy. All right, going to the back now. So, license plate looks good, the star, the 600, yeah, that 600 is probably big, or not. I'm looking at the rear photo, it's actually pretty big on the rear photo. So the tail lights, it's nice that they're transparent, and they have a good set color separation. And then, uh, look at these tiny exhaust tips. They're very round, yet they're hollow. Those are really nice. I wouldn't be surprised if these are metal tubes 
because I have a hard time thinking you could get something that thin molded out of plastic and be hollow. Those are really nice, like they're up there in my top 10 of muffler tips. <laughs> Maybe I should do a video on top 10 muffler tips. Alright, license plate looks good. You know, the lights also have this little chrome going around them. These lights don't actually match that photo, but again, if this car was in production for several years, you know, maybe we, this is a different year. So, in ti inside time. Hmm. Let me go over this thing again. Try to focus. And I think I'll get the flashlight out. Get a little additional light. So, nice sky blue interior. In the middle is like a burled walnut or something like that. And there's actually a tampo on the middle. I don't know what that is though. Maybe it's like an entertainment center. So, it's interesting because the seats on this one do not match that photograph either. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like this interior is wrong. Because why would you have a door open forward? Well, I guess that would just be considered a suicide door now. But then why would this door open that way? I, I don't know, it seems a little weird if the the seats are opposing. The, you'd kind of think the door handles would be next to each other and they'd open like a like at the back of a van or something like that, or like double doors of a building. The far door panel, it's black, I think. And, but a lot of good detail. Look at that. That whole wood trim line going across. And there's also some in the bottom as well of the rear door. The rear door has a silver handle or maybe that's a window. No, it's got to be a handle. This thing has power windows, I'm pretty sure. I talked about this car in the GCD review, so I'm not really talking about the specs of this car. Wow, so look at that steering wheel over there. It's, it's a little bit weird in its angle, but... It's also interesting that there are no seat backs, uh, so yeah, the the photographs that I pulled up do have headrests, but maybe again this is a different year, a very early year, not sure. Anyways, it looks like there's a round white dial next to that steering wheel. I don't know if that's a part of the instrument cluster, but the dashboard has a bunch of black printed on it. So let's try the other side. Oh boy, I touched that flagpole. Man, that thing's gonna break. It's, I can't. Oh, there we go. Alright, so look at that. There's a Mercedes Star. That looks like a very modern steering wheel, but maybe I'm wrong. And so I guess that white dial is part of the instrument cluster because it's now one to the left of the steering wheel. So there's a lot of detail going on on this interior, it's quite nice. Yeah, there's even down below some more of that white wood. So there's actually two different wood colors going on. The dash is a darker wood color, and then you have the light one as well. So that's really neat. Yeah, alright. Very cool. It's one of the, it's a good interior, that's for sure. Hmm. What is a little weird is these two rear seats do have headrests. So it's kind of strange that the... Well, maybe I know the reason. There actually is a partition between the, the driver's compartment and the back. So maybe that's why they couldn't get the headrests. Or maybe there wouldn't be headrests if you had a, gla a glass partition in a car like this. Boy, if there weren't, that just... Imagine getting go to an accident, your head smashes against that glass. Maybe it's plexiglass or something. Okay, well, very cool. Um, kind of sad that it didn't come with any sort of stickers or something to put on to the flagpoles. You know, like uh, some country st stickers, or so you can make this like a diplomat's car, or you know, some sort of uh, dictator. Let's get uh, the comparison time going. Well, this is a hard one. I can't fit this on the tray of comparison.
we have to leave them down here. So the GCD, it's one of my early purchases. Look at the grill. The GCD does have a nice metallic grill, but it looks nothing like the grill on the real car. It's almost like this is a custom Pullman, you know, with just one solid uh, grate. And it does have a Mercedes star, and actually, now that I look at it, those stars actually are similar in dimension. This one has pretty thin things going on as well. One thing that I've noticed though, the GCD actually has a round base to the star. This one does not, I don't think. The GCD actually has a more realistic blue Mercedes emblem here in its size. This is much too cartoonish. The GCD also has striations in the headlamps. A much thinner chrome surround versus that chrome surround on the headlamps. Hmm. Alright. Kind of going back to the wipers. And probably, well, the GCD, I think, has bent wiper blades. There's something about them, the, the blades themselves are very thin. They're a little thicker on this guy. The chrome surround of the window seems okay. This one doesn't have these chrome vent things. This one's just part of the casting. This one actually has them up here. Um, the side photo it does seem like they are chromed. The mirrors on the GC are definitely smaller. I don't know if that's more accurate, but at least they're more equal in, in appearance than this weird blobby, blobby one. The GCD's got a little sunroof too, and it's tinted. Sorry. There we go. Nice tan interior on the GCD. There's brown on the far door panels as well. There's a black steering wheel. No, oh, now the GCD does have front headrests, but none in the rear, so that's a different take. So maybe they, these guys model different uh, benzes, but uh, the GCD doesn't have the weird off-road sidewalls, right? These look like regular road-going tires because they don't have the side tread blocks. And the GCD has blanked off wheels, but these little openings are much smaller, which might actually be a little more realistic. The GCD just has blanked off, you know, exhaust pipes, whereas this guy actually has super cool thin ones. I also feel like this is a wider than this. I think you can even tell. Through the this shot, right? This looks like a wider vehicle. This looks a bit narrow. If I had to guess, it might be bigger, being a limousine. All right. So the GCD has four door handles, and uh, this one has six. But they both have the opposing rear second row seats facing backwards. The GCD just has the painted on chrome line going around here, whereas this has that cool plastic. Uh, another thing, the GCD taillights are thinner in height. That might be the case on the real one. Hmm. Okay, well, those are the major things I can see. I don't know. What, what should you guys like more? I feel like this thing looks lower, right? Because the, the roof is lower. It almost looks like a custom. Now that I'm thinking of it, like the height of the side windows compared to the body. If you look at this photograph, this canopy is pretty high compared to the body, right? The GCD, I feel like the, the windows are much shorter. So I kind of feel like this one's a little more accurate because just looking at the proportion of the windows to the door. Yeah, I'm liking this one more. You know, the grill is the obvious, obvious one. But, uh, well, they both have license plates. This one seems a little more realistic. This one says, you know, SMB600. That could actually be a real license plate. But this one just says Pullman as if it was like at a car dealership. All right, well, it's better to have nothing. I mean, Pullman than nothing at all. All right, well, if you're in the... There is one other brand called Yuan Li. 
uh, and that might even be better than both of these but uh, it wasn't inexpensive so that's why I didn't buy it so I'm pretty happy I got this one there might be another video possibly I'll customize this maybe put some crazy pimp wheels because it looks kind of like a low rider limo already in fact actually let me just put this on this base here look at this look at the difference of this that's insane this is touching that base and the yeah this has to be off ah boy let me look up some dimensions all right there are the dimensions online so the wheelbase is 3900 so let's take 3900 divided by this measured wheelbase here Like this, those stars are there, so that's kind of nice. Getting around 61.4, 63.5. Could be a tiny bit big, or could just be me measuring improperly. Let's try again with this one 3900. The GCD steers, so that's a plus. I don't know if this uh, DCM steers, I'll have to try. Sixty point five. Huh, sixty four and a half. So this one's a little bit small, and that one's a little bit big, around the same amount as well. Height though, fifteen ten millimeters. Three point two five, because this thing's bowing downwards. I'm gonna have to rough it. Divide by twenty three point two five. It's on sixty five scale. Fifteen ten divided by. Five point maybe one five. Whoa, one sixty. All right. These tires are touching the base, so it's not floating. So fifteen ten divided by twenty five. Alright, so this blue car actually might be overscaled. Hmm. And then width, actually it does tell me the width, 1950. I'm just gonna measure the body itself. 30.65. Sixty well sixty three point six twenty nine point eight five one sixty five. All right, so neither of these is really I think this I think this is supposed to be a model in between these two. And maybe that's that Yuan Lee one. Ah, bearing in mind the a fraction of a millimeter times 64 is gonna throw off the number a bit a lot. So my measuring, even though with digital calipers, might be wrong. Uh, but here, look at look at the difference. It's, it's noticeable as far as the width, that's for sure. The height we already saw. The overall length, actually, the overall length is pretty much the same. Hmm. Tough call, guys. Tough call. I still think I'm gonna go like this one the most because of the grill and looking at the windows. I just think the cabin of this should be taller uh, than this.
this guy. This is a steer. Take it off the base and we're gonna find out. Boy, I really hope I don't drop this guy. No, it does not steer. Nor does it take any credit for who made this on the bottom. Probably unlicensed. It's nice that it has all this silver paint though on the exhaust system. So that's pretty neat. And it's nice that it's screwed together. For some reason you find that interior not to your liking. I think it's quite nice. Yeah, alright. Well, I guess I'll just deal with this later. So now it is time to spin around and look at a couple of the Benzes. Over in the Benzo. I'm not going to bother putting this thing up because we compared it. Shuko, the Mercedes-Benz W110, which my notes say is a 1965 to a 1968 car. It's a little bit crude. Uh, at least the Mercedes star on it is a little bit crude. You can just see how thick it is because it's plastic. But, uh, well, you know what? Shuko's where I live. It costs a lot. They're like $20 or more even sometimes 30 so I kind of feel like this is overpriced you know it just looks more like a matchbox than a, a premium it also has this blobby casted in mirror so it is very matchbox hot wheels kind of quality still I bought another one this is a 200D, a Mercedes 200D from 1968 to 1976. This one must be a newer casting. This star is much thinner in its appearance. But, or maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. It still has a blobby mirror though, so that's not very appealing. Uh, a couple other brands. We have Kyosho. They have this Mercedes 300 SL from 67 to 71. It's not bad. It has painted taillights though, which is really not typical of Kyosho. That was a bit of a letdown. It may also be out of scale. I think uh, XLT Off-Road Bear may have measured that one. This is a UCC Coffee 300 SL. And this is a free freebie that came with a can of coffee. It doesn't have an interior, it just has blacked out windows, but otherwise I think it's a fantastic model. I mean, its stance is much better than the Shuko one. And when you factor in that it costs someone nothing, or like maybe $1.50 for a can of coffee, it's pretty darn good. Hmm, now compared to these other vehicles, assuming they're 164, and they're kind of from the same era, yeah, this thing might be a bit big, you know. I I have a hard time thinking it'd be much wider than this these two cars. Right. Sports cars, yeah, that's not really something I compare, but let's put the, the GCD back up here after all. Interesting. I think the GCD is maybe more accurate in size compared to the Shuko's at least. Right? The roof lines would be similar amongst those three cars. The width is more similar than this, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Here's a top view. Okay, so a lot to think about if you're thinking about getting such a, a model. Um, it 
definitely seems big in certain aspects, but it does have more detail. If you're gonna just have it in the case, I guess it's no big deal. But if you're gonna put it into a diorama, it's, it might look a little bit weird. I will say I, I do like it still. You know, the, all the details are there. The only quality problem that I saw was that weird blobby mirror. Uh, but amazingly, the paint is really nice. Uh, there could have been many chances for some contaminants to get into that paint or have some weirdness to it. But uh, I didn't see any. And then all these little fragile parts, those flagpoles in particular in that star, the wiper blades, and those exhaust tips are awesome. Okay, well anyways, as I mentioned, AliExpress, you might want to look at it, look it up. It was really inexpensive, so for what I paid for it, I think this is fantastic. Alright, I guess I'll see you in the next limo review. Bye. Oh, one other thing. Hugh Hefner was asked one time, uh, what's your best pickup line? He said, hi, my name is Hugh Hefner. <laughs> so, alright, take care.